Here's another one of these twisted statistics questions where we need to understand it conceptually. There is really no way to kind of do math here. We need to understand how mean and median work and what they're asking us to do. So the data set F consists of 55 integers between 170 and 290. Data set G consists of all the integers in data set F as well as the integer 10. Which of the following must be less for data set F than for data set G? So just be really clear. I think some people make a mistake here because they just misread this part, right? So we're, we're looking for F being less than G, right? So what do we just do though, right? So F is a set that's all, that's 55 numbers from 170 to 290. G is F plus the number 10, right? So I don't even, plus is the right way to think about it. Maybe I just put like a comma instead because we're adding that number 10. So let's think about the two things, the mean. Well, none, none of the numbers in data set F is even close to 10, right? So if we throw a 10 in there, we are absolutely going to lower that average by probably a decent amount. So this is a case then where G for the mean, G is going to be less than F, right? So notice that's not what I wrote up here, right? So this is the thing is the question I think is kind of worded in such a way and, and maybe because you understand what the answer is supposed to be, you're going to read this maybe backwards and think that you're like G is actually the lower thing is what they're saying in the question, but no, they're saying F is lower. So the mean is not lower. For, for F, no way. We are definitely lowering this average by adding in a really low number. Just think about how like your tests work in school. If you get a really bad grade on a test, suddenly your average goes down, no matter how high all those other grades were, right? It's not maybe gonna go down by a ton, but it's gonna be affected. That's what's happening here. The grading system is off because we're 170 to 290, but it's the same principle. So that gets rid of uh, Roman numeral one. Now remember the median. Median is the absolute minimum. Uh, the absolute middle. So we we don't really know what's going on because I don't know what the numbers are in data set F. It could be that all the data, all the numbers in data set F are, I don't know, 200, right? It doesn't say they have to be different, I don't think. So if we added a new number, right? If we added a new number, uh, how can I write this, right? So if F, if F were just a bunch of 200s, so let's do it down here maybe, F is 55, 200s. <laughs> Let's just leave it like that. G is 55 200s and a 10. <laughs> well, think about how that would look if we just wrote all those numbers out, right? The median wouldn't actually change. They would be the same for both because adding in a 10, you're moving the median slightly down the list. But since the list is entirely a bunch of 200s, it's not going to matter. So they're the same. Now that's enough to prove this wrong, right? Because they're asking which of the following must be less for F than G. So we've already found a situation where F does not have a lower median. It has the exact same median as G. But even that is a weird situation. What's much more likely is F is a scattering of numbers. But since we don't know what's going on in those numbers, adding the number 10 will shift the median down and maybe that makes it less for F, but it could very easily be the same. It won't be greater, I don't think. I don't think there's any way for that to happen. But um, it could be that the medians, it's very likely, or not very likely, but very possible that they're equal. So that's why that one's wrong. So yeah, D is the answer. Um, I think some people are scared to pick an answer like D because they're like, "How that shouldn't happen. That's That seems weird, but I don't know. We proved it. So yeah, there you go. Um, but Again, it's kind of conceptual. I did a little bit of an arithmetize here. Um, it's not, I'm not, I, as it, obviously I'm not gonna come up with a 55 number list. I don't have the kind of time in a hard module to do that. So you gotta do these kind of like half arithmetizes. What if all the numbers were this? What if some of the numbers were that, you know? And, and kind of think about it that way. But uh, it still kind of has the spirit of arithmetizing which is I don't wanna just feel my answer. I kinda of wanna have some numbers to back it up. That's kind of what I'm doing in my head and it's helping. So um, hopefully that's kind of what you automatically would do anyway, but that is the best way to handle any math situation is try to make it more visual, try to make it more concrete, give yourself some data points, even if you don't list them all out, give yourself some rules to follow, see if you can think about it with, with numbers in some way that's probably better than just kind of feeling it out without any numbers.